In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 19, Part 16. August 8, 1926. The more the soul is identified with God, the more he can give her, and she can take. Example of the Sea and the Little Stream As I was in my usual state, I felt all abandoned in the arms of Jesus. And he, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, the more the soul is identified with me, the more I can give her, and she can take from me. It happens as between the sea and a little stream that is separated from the sea only by a wall, so much so that if the wall were removed, the sea and the little stream would become one single sea. Now, if the sea overflows, being near it, the little stream receives the water of the sea. If its roaring waves rise, in lowering again, they unload themselves into the nearby little stream. The water of the sea pours into it through the cracks of the wall. So the tiny little stream constantly receives the waters of the sea. And because it is little, it keeps swelling up, and it gives back to the sea the water it has received, to then receive it again. However, this happens because the little stream is near the sea. But if it were far away, neither could the sea give, nor could it receive. Its distance would put it in the condition of not even knowing the sea. While saying this, he showed to my mind, in practice, the act of the sea and of the little stream. And then he continued, My daughter, the sea is God. The tiny little stream is the soul. The wall that separates them is the human nature that makes one distinguish God and the creature. The overflowings, the waves that rise continuously 
to unload themselves into the little stream are my divine will that wants to give so much to the creature that the little stream being filled and swelling up may overflow may form its waves swollen by the wind of the supreme will and may pour back into the divine sea to be filled again in such a way as to be able to say I live the life of the sea and even though I am little I too do what it does I overflow I form my waves I rise and I try to give to the sea what it gives to me so the soul who is identified with me and lets herself be dominated by my will is the repeater of the divine acts her love her adorations her prayers and everything she does is the outpouring of God that she receives so has to be able to say it is your love that loves you your adorations that adore you your prayers that pray you it is your will that investing me makes me do what you do to give it back to you as your own things Jesus kept silent but then as though taken by an irresistible emphasis of love he added O power of my will how great you are you alone unite the greatest and highest being with the littlest and lowest being making them one you alone have the virtue of emptying the creature of all that does not belong to you to be able to form in her with your reflections that eternal sun that filling heaven and earth with its rays goes to blend with the sun of the supreme majesty you alone have this virtue of communicating the supreme strength in such a way that with your strength the creature can rise to that single act of God the Creator ah my daughter when the creature does not live in the unity of my will she loses the one strength and remains as though disunited from that strength that fills heaven and earth and sustains the whole universe as if it were the littlest feather now when the soul does not let herself be dominated by my will she loses the one strength in all of her actions and therefore all her acts not coming out of the same single strength remain divided among themselves love is divided the action separated the prayer disjointed being divided all the acts of the creature are poor meager without light and so patience is poor charity is weak obedience is crippled humility is blind prayer is mute sacrifice is without life without vigor because since my will is missing the one strength is missing that uniting everything gives the same strength to each act of the creature therefore they are left not only divided among themselves but adulterated by the human will and so each one is left with its own defect this happened to Adam by withdrawing from the supreme will he lost the one single strength of his creator and since he was left with his limited human strength he felt hardship in his operating more so since the strength that he employed in performing one action would debilitate him and in having to do another 
he would not feel the same strength. So he touched the poverty of his actions with his own hand. Not having the same strength, they were not only divided, but each one had its own defect. It happened as to a rich lord, who possesses most extensive properties. As long as they belong to one owner only, he shows off. He makes big purchases. Who knows how many servants he maintains under himself. And with the large proceeds he receives, he keeps making new purchases. But suppose that this property were to be divided among other heirs. That's it. His great power is already lost. He can no longer show off as before, nor make new purchases. He must limit himself in his expenditures, and his servants are few. So his greatness, his lordship, has vanished. What is left are just barely the traces of it. So it happened to Adam. By withdrawing from my will, he lost the one single strength of his creator. And with it he lost his lordship, his dominion. Nor did he feel the strength to show off in good any more. The same happens for one who is not completely abandoned in the arms of my will. Because with it, the strength of good converts into one's nature, and poverty does not exist. August 12, 1926. The divine will cannot reign if the three powers of the soul are not ordered with God. The privations of my sweet Jesus are getting longer. Oh, how he makes me yearn for his return. How hours and days seem like centuries without him, but centuries of night, not of days. So while I was anxiously waiting for his return, like a rising flash, he came out from within my interior and clasping me to himself told me, My daughter, man was created by God with three powers, memory, intellect, and will, and this so that he might have the links of communications with the divine persons of the sacrosanct trinity. These were like paths along which to ascend to God, like doors through which to enter, like rooms in which to form the continuous dwelling, the creature for God, God for the creature. These are the royal paths of both of them, the gold doors that God placed in the depth of the soul through which the supreme sovereignty of the divine majesty might enter. The safe and unshakable room in which God was to have his celestial dwelling. Now, in order to be able to form its kingdom in the inmost place of the soul, my will wants to find these three powers given to the creature to raise her to the likeness of the creator in order with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. My will would not go out of its dominions if these three powers of the soul were in order with God, and its reigning would be happy and as though natural, because her three powers, being in order with God, the creature would have order within herself and outside of herself, and the kingdom of the will of God and that of the creature would not be a divided kingdom, but a single one, and therefore its dominion and regime 
would be one. More so, since my will does not know how to reign where there is no order and harmony, inseparable qualities and indispensable properties of the divine persons. And the soul can never be ordered and harmonized with her creator if she does not have her three powers open to receive from God his qualities ordered and his properties harmonized in such a way that finding the divine harmonies and the supreme order of the divine kingdom and of the human kingdom my will may make them one and reign in it with its full dominion Ah, my daughter, how much disorder reigns in the three powers of the human soul? One can say that they have shut the door on our face. They have barricaded the paths to prevent our passing and to break the communications with us. While it was the greatest gift we gave man in creating him. These three powers were to serve him, to comprehend he who had created him, to grow in his likeness and his will being transfused in that of his creator to give him the right to let it reign. This is why the supreme volition cannot reign in the soul if these three powers, intellect, memory, and will, do not hold hands in order to return to the purpose for which God created man. Therefore, Pray that these three powers may return to the order and the harmony of their Creator, so that my supreme will may reign with its full triumph. August 14, 1926 Bitternesses of the Soul Because of the News of the Upcoming Printing of the Writings on the Will of God Words of Jesus in this regard My poor heart swims in the sea of the bitternesses of the privations of my sweet Jesus. If he comes at all, he is like a flash that escapes. And in that light of the flash, I see the poor world, its grave evils, the bonds among nations that are binding themselves to one another in order to start wars and revolutions. And by doing this, they draw the chastisements of heaven, but so grave as to destroy entire cities and peoples. Oh God, how great is the human blindness. But as the flash of his lovable presence ends, I remain in the dark more than before with the thought of my poor brothers scattered in the hard exile of life. But this was not enough to fill my poor heart with intense bitternesses. Something else added to suffocate my poor existence with those roaring waves that overwhelm my poor soul. That is, the news of the upcoming printing of the writings on the most holy will of God. Since our Monsignor Archbishop had given his approval, placing the imprimatur himself. But this was nothing. The most fatal blow to my poor soul has been the news that they were going to put not only what regarded the divine will, but after so much insistence from our Lord and the superiors, I had convinced myself that the glory of God required this. And miserable and little as I am, it is not for me to oppose what blessed Jesus wants. But they were going to put out for printing also the order that Jesus has kept with me and everything he has told me, also about the other virtues and circumstances. This was too painful for me, and I spoke out my reasons over and over again so that it would not be done. Then, while I was so oppressed, my sweet Jesus, 
moving in my interior, as though feeling the weight of my oppression, clasped me in his arms, and shaking me up told me, My daughter, what's the matter? What's the matter? Be cheered. I do not want you to be so oppressed. Instead of thanking me, you oppress yourself? You must know that, so that my supreme will might be known, I had to prepare things, dispose means, overwhelm the archbishop with those acts of absolute dominion of my will that man cannot resist. I had to make one of my great prodigies. Do you think it is easy to obtain the approval of a bishop? How hard it is. How many quibbles. How many difficulties. And if they approve at all, it is with many restrictions, almost removing the most beautiful shades, the most striking colors, from all that my goodness has revealed with so much love. Don't you see, then, the triumph of my will in the approval of the Archbishop, and therefore my great glory, and the great necessity that the knowledges about the Supreme Will become known, and like beneficial do, dampen the ardor of passions. Like rising sun, my will dispels the darkness of the human will, and removes the torpor that almost all creatures have, also in doing good, because the life of my will is missing. My manifestations about it shall be like the balm that shall heal the wounds produced by the human will. Those who shall have the good of knowing them shall feel a new life of light, of grace, of strength, flow within them to fulfill my will in everything. Not only this, but in comprehending the great evil of their own will, they shall abhor it and shall shake themselves from the yoke so very hard of the human will to place themselves under the gentle dominion of mine. Ah, you do not know nor see what I know and see. Therefore let me do it, and do not oppress yourself. Rather, you yourself should have urged and pushed the one whom I have disposed with so much love to take on this commitment. Even more, you should have told him to hurry and not to lose time. My daughter, the kingdom of my will is unshakable, and in these knowledges about it, I have placed so much light, grace, and attraction as to render it victorious in such a way that, as they become known, they shall wage a sweet battle against the human will, and creatures shall be conquered. These knowledges shall be an immensely high and strong wall, more than the terrestrial Eden, that shall prevent the enemy from entering in order to molest those who, conquered by it, shall pass to live in the kingdom of my will. Therefore do not become disturbed, and let me do, and I shall dispose everything, so that the supreme fiat may be known. August 18, 1926, Jesus encourages the one who must undertake the printing of the writings on the most holy will of God. Power of the Acts Done in the Divine Will While I was praying, I found myself outside of myself, and at the same time I saw the Reverend Father, who must occupy himself with the printing of the writings on the Most Holy Will of God. Our Lord was near him, 
taking all the knowledges, the effects, and the values he has manifested about the Supreme Will that had changed into threads of light and impressing them in his intelligence in such a way as to form a crown of light around his head. And while doing this, he said to him, My son, the task I have given you is great, and therefore it is necessary that I give you much light in order to make you comprehend with clarity what I have revealed. In fact, they shall produce their effects according to the clarity with which they shall be exposed, even though they are most clear in themselves. Indeed, that which regards my will is light that descends from heaven, that does not overwhelm and dazzle the sight of the intelligence, but has the virtue of strengthening and enlightening the human intellect so as to be comprehended and loved, and of casting into the depth of the soul, the source of her origin, the true purpose for which man was created, the order between creator and creature. And each one of my sayings, manifestations, knowledges about my supreme will are as many strokes of the brush to make the soul return to the likeness of her creator. Everything I have said about my will is nothing other than preparing the way, forming the army, gathering the chosen people, preparing the royal palace, disposing the ground on which the kingdom of my will must be formed and so rule and dominate. Therefore the task I am entrusting to you is great. I shall guide you. I shall be near you, so that everything may be done according to my will. Then after this he blessed him, and came to my little soul, resuming his speaking, my daughter, how much I care about my will, how I love, how I yearn that it may become known. My interest is so great that I am disposed to give any grace to whomever wants to occupy himself with making it known. Oh, how I wish that they would hurry, because I see that all my rights shall be given back to me the order between God and the creature shall be re-established. I shall no longer give my gifts to the human generations as halved, but as whole, nor shall I ever again receive from them things that are incomplete, but whole. Ah, my daughter, being able to give and wanting to give but finding no one to whom to give is always a pain and a weight with no hope of relief. If you knew with how much jealousy of love I stay around the soul when I see her disposed to do her acts in my will. Before she begins her act, I make the light and the virtue of my will flow in it so that her act may take its origin on the virtue that my will contains. As she keeps forming it, the divine light and virtue invest it and carry it out. As she completes it, the light is sealed over it and gives it the form of a divine act. And oh, how my supreme goodness delights in seeing that the creature possesses this divine act. To these acts, my eternal love never says enough. It gives, and gives always, because with these divine acts formed by the creature in my will, my love cannot limit itself. Since they are divine, it must repay them with infinite love and without limits. 
Don't you yourself see and feel with how much love I guide you, I accompany you, and many times I reach the point of doing what you do together with you? And this in order to give to your acts the value of a divine value. How happy I am in seeing that, by virtue of my will, your acts are divine, similar to mine. There is no more distance between your little love and mine, between your adoration and mine, between your prayers and mine. Invested by the light of the eternal volition, they lose their finiteness, their human appearances, and acquire the infinite and the divine substance, and transforming altogether the working of God and of the soul, my will makes them one. Therefore be attentive and let your flight in my will be continuous. After this, my always lovable Jesus came back and made himself seen all worried, suffering, and as though restless because of the great offenses of creatures. I wanted to calm him, give him rest, but I could not manage to. Then the thought came to me of doing my usual acts in the supreme fiat. And as I was doing this, Jesus would calm down and take rest. Then he told me, My daughter, the acts in my will are more than solar rays that are such that, if one wants to look at them, one sight is eclipsed by the light in such a way that one can neither look nor distinguish anything any more. If the light of the sun has so much power, much more do the acts done in my will. The light of my will has the power to eclipse and take evil away from creatures, that they may not do worse things. And with the power of its light, it prevents the offenses from reaching me. And just as the light of the sun, because it contains the simile of the eternal sun of the supreme fiat, contains all colors, and from them derive innumerable effects that unleash countless goods for the human generations, while one seems to see nothing but radiant and white light, the same for the eternal sun of my will. While it is the light of my will alone, inside of it there are as though many colors, all the divine similes, enclosed, that contain infinite effects and unleash fountains of love, of goodness, of mercy, of power, of science, in sum, all the divine qualities. Therefore the working of my will contains such power and harmony as to favor the rest of your beloved Jesus. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 19, Part 16. Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.